So now what you're going to do is you're going to add your DXF file. So we're going to just add the feature class or feature data set from the DXF in your geodatabase. Okay, so add that. And some of you may have noticed this so far or not, but there's different types of tables of contents. So this is list by drawing order, which shows the sequence of points overlaid on lines, overlaid on polygons. And you really never want to have your polygon overlaid on your points because then if you zoom in here, oh, look at that. Um, you're covering some of your points. So stick it below the polyline and now you can see the points again. The other table of contents is sort of interesting here is the list by source. So it'll show that actually here's where all this data is stored. It's in my geo database and within a feature data set. So that's sort of helpful to know where things are, how they're organized. So we're just going to check out this data a little bit. Um, if you use the identify tool, I really like using this identify tool, and you start selecting some of these lines, like that one right there, you see that it is its own line, and so is this one. But these are radio, oh, not that one. These are radial shots. See this radial shot here? So the radial shots are their own segments, line segments. But unfortunately, the primary traverse that you did is just one single line. In fact, it's object ID 39 in your um, attribute table. And what you'd like to do is split these into different surface types and width types. So for instance, let's say this segment here was grass and the rest here was concrete and then here was gravel. And this was, uh, I don't know, 10 meters wide, this was 2 meters wide, and this was 5 meters wide, right? So you'd like to have that in your attribute table. So here's when you're going to use some of the editor tools that we worked with last week. So go to toolbars under customize and you want to make turn on your editor. The next step is to start editing and just hit continue. So you always like to use this little edit tool and you're going to select the feature and use the split tool. I think split tool is pretty suitable at this point. So I'm going to split here because this segment and if I select over here, I want to split it there too because that segment and this segment are, are different. So I'm going to split tool. I'm going to split like that. So now if you select this one here, it's its own segment, that's its own segment, and this is its own segment. So I'm now going to go editor, save edits. Nice. Okay. Now the next step is this is within the DXF, and that's a little bit clunky and not necessarily what we want. So you're going to go editor, stop editing. And you're going to use this select features. So this is selecting features based on, um, how do they, what do they explain it? Layers by clicking on them or dragging a box over them. Or shift while selecting features. So what I'm going to do now is select this one over here. Oh, it's still selecting the whole line. Shift. There we go. And shift. So essentially what you want to make sure is you've got all of your traverse segments. Let's try that again. This one, it seems to want to select, um, yeah, that's annoying. <laughs> okay, so let's do that, actually. Let's select the whole traverse line. So even though we split it, it seems to still have one continuous traverse line for some reason. So let's see what that looks like in our polyline. So I'm going to open up the attribute table, and if I scroll down, why are you doing this to me? I actually have to make it much bigger for some reason. I don't know what's going on with this thing today, but it's kind of frozen. Oh, there we go. It's working now. So it's just selecting one line. Maybe this thing didn't get split in the way that I wanted to split it. Um, so let's, for fun, just select that one and see what that looks like. It's selecting the whole thing. Shift, shift. Let's select 39, 38. Clear that. 30. Okay, 43 is that segment. I'm going to clear it, so I hit that little white thing to clear. 42 is the side segment, so the gravel, clear. And 39 is the other segment. Great. So these are all called 3D polylines. Here's every, all the um, radial shots are also 3D polylines, so that's kind of cool too. But what I really want is to just use these three and call them my trail. So I'm going to hit shift, shift, and shift. And now those three lines within my table, attribute table, are now selected. Just close this. They're still selected. 
So now you're going to go right click data, export data, and you're going to bring it in to that um, trail features that we created earlier. Now ignore the fact that I've got trail v2, but you're going to add it to this one here and you're going to go save. And it says it's going to already exist. Would you like to write it? You say yes. And you say okay. And now it's exporting that plotline feature and yes, you want to add it to your map. Great. So now why don't you turn off this one for a second and let's just play with, in fact, let's turn all this stuff off. Multi-patch, just get rid of it, remove it, great. So now what you should have, let's open up the attribute table, fantastic, it's three different features. And now these are separate lines, right? One line, two line, three line. And it's time to clean things up because really the only attributes we care for at this point are feature uh, length is great. Any, there's no real comments that are gonna be of any use. Uh, doc path, all that, it's just junk. <sighs> it's not going to be useful. So now you're going to get your editor going again. Start editing. Just say continue. And now what you're going to do is you're going to delete some of these. So why don't we delete all of this except for length. Shift. Oh, it won't let me do a mother bunch at once. Right click. Hmm, not working how I want to work. And this is why it's not working the way I want to work. You, ha you can't be in editor mode, so I just stopped editing. So stop editing. And now what you can do is delete a bunch of fields. Delete field. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so let's see if we can delete more. Hit shift. Oh, oh let me do more at once. Hmm. Right click. Delete field. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yeah. So you're going to clean things up. I think that there's probably a faster way to do this, but for now this is what we're going to do. Yeah, you're just going to delete all that stuff. Delete. Delete. I think you get the picture. Now, there must be a way to do multiples. If I hit control, maybe that'll work. Ah! Okay, so hold down the control. Let's see if this works. Ooh, thickness might be a good attribute to just keep. Elevation, let's keep that one. Delete field. Yes. Yay. Okay. So you're going to clean things up. Maybe hold on to that elevation or all this stuff in this business. We really don't need it. <laughs> um, why is this not? Okay. Right click delete fields. Yeah. It only wants to do one at a time, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. So let me just say that there's other ways to do this that are maybe more effective. Maybe in the editor here. I wonder if we can do anything in here. If we start our editor. Attributes. Let's pick that. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's another way to do this. But anyways, so clean things up that way. And once you've cleaned things up, we're going to stop editing. You're going to right click on your polyline again, go back into this attribute table. And now we're going to create some attributes that make sense for us. So you can't be in editor mode to do this, but what you want to do is you want to go add field. Oh, why is it used by another person? Oh, maybe because of this editor. Make sure you're not editing. Oh, because I'm doing the wrong one. Open attribute table and you're going to go here, add field. There we go. And your field is going to be width. And then the type we're going to keep with um, short integer or actually let's call it text. And you just want a text length of um, maybe 10 characters. Great. So you're going to see width show up down here. And now you're going to add another one that's called, um, let's see, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, surface. And this time you also want text. And again, maybe just 10, maximum of 10 characters. Great. 
So now what you can do is you can start editing again. And it's weird how you sort of need to go back and forth like that. But when you're in this editor mode and you are in your attribute table, you can now scroll down and add the width. And maybe for width, you're going to either call it narrow or wide. So in this uh, case, I picked the text type, so I'll do narrow or wide. But maybe you would like to give it in meters. So maybe you would call it width underline underscore m for width meters. And then you would write here uh, an integer value that's like 5 or 10, something like that. And here, surface type, um, what did I say that was again? Gravel. Great. So now over here, you're going to do the same thing. So let's say this is wide, and this is going to be grass. And over here, you've got... So I think you get narrow, maybe this one's narrow. And this is going to be concrete. I think you get the point. At this point, it's important to save your edits now. Because now what we can do is right click, go to our properties, symbology, categories, and what we can do is unique values, many. So let's say we pick this one to be width. And here we're going to do service. And you're going to add all values. So now you're going to have the wide grass, narrow concrete, narrow gravel. Maybe pick a different set of colors. You could also uh, change the line thickness for wide. And actually, this should probably be green. There we go. And then concrete, narrow, maybe that'll be a, um, a little bit thicker. and Maybe it'll be a gray, like that. And then gravel, because it's gravel, maybe we'll do it dashed like that. Great. And now your map's going to look a little bit more interesting. Maybe not the best choice of colors, but um, there you go. That's how you would deal with that. So in summary, what we worked on here was how to use the split tool in Editor to split our trail into different segments. Then once we had them in those segments, we didn't want the rest of the stuff coming in from the DXF, so we exported those into our trail feature data set. Then we spent a little bit of time cleaning up, not that successfully. I'm obsessive. Look at this. Editor, stop. We spent a bit of time trying to clean this up, and deleting these fields. And unfortunately, if someone can come up with a faster way of doing things, uh, gold star for you, I'm be stoked, because I'm sure there's another way to do this. <laughs> and then um, after that, we were able to add new attribute fields and to symbolize our trail that way.